CataractCoach.com. This is the best of Cataract Coach with our expert panelists, Dr. Rosa Bragamili and Dr. Deepinder Dhaliwal. Oh, now this is a case I did. This is a really fun one. It's probably my favorite one of the whole day. You're going to love this one. Here are the pre-op photos, okay? Left I had trauma 10 years ago. That's when you see pre-op of the wow. left. Right eye's okay, 65-year-old guys. Left eye looks like that, totally opaque, no view of the back. You can see this big gap between the iris and the lens. Here's the patient on the OR table. There's that big sign of a gap right there. I put a little tramps in though. See, I learned from the first case. Yeah. And luckily, by some miracle, there's no vis- there's Hey, no, no vitreous. Yeah. I like it. Now I'm gonna ask you, this looks like a pretty pretty good density there. What's your next step now? So if there's no tramps tramps done, now what? Inject viscoelastic and then put tripan underneath. Yeah, paint it with tripan. Paint. Now which viscoelastic do you want? Dispersive, cohesive? Dispersive. And how much do you inject in that gap? I don't ju- inject into the gap. I would just inject over, over the gap. Over the gap. Ah, okay. Like your regular AC fill. You, don't, you won't put a little extra viscoelastic in that oh, gap? Oh, yeah. A little extra Absolutely. over the gap to make sure everything's okay there, but not into Like, I wouldn't go behind it or anything. And then do you like a, like a soft shell or just only dispersive? I just do dispersive. Just dispersive? I just do dispersive, too. And then, again, how you want to paint the capsule then with the tri just a little bit? Just a little bit, because again, if there is, obviously there is zonular issues, you don't want to stain the vitreous. Yeah. So paint the capsule, but I leave it a little bit longer if I want a deeper stain. Oh, leave the dye on for longer. A little bit longer. If uh, I want it to. Are you not worried that it makes up with the capsule more fragile, less elastic? Well, not that long. Just what? a little bit longer. Like how many seconds? 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, wow. So I'm going to follow your advice. That's my whole case time. I told you I get great panelists. These two right here. So, okay, follow your advice. Very, very, very little tripan. Yeah. Because I don't want it to go back in the vitreous. So, just put a little bit, just kind of rub it around and help loosen up more zonules. Got some air bubbles there, which I got to get out because you got to have a pretty video. I'm always cognizant of is my video pretty? So here's more viscoelastic. Ugh, bubbles aren't coming out, so I'm gonna go and aspirate them manually. Hey, did I tell you about rentarounds.com, our new sister channel? We have a rent <laughs> channel. I know it's the ASRS meeting, but we actually have videos that are appropriate for anterior segment surgeons, like how to place a trocar, which you need to know how to do. If you wanna be like Steve Safford, you don't know how to do this. Now, what kind of incision are you gonna do for you? Clear cornea phaco, limbal near clear, scleral tunnel phaco, M6, ECCE with scissors like they taught me when I was a resident. Oh, fuck. Don't choose E. What do you want to do here, you guys? I, I would do a scleral tunnel because I, I would ha- hedge my bets that I could, might have to convert to M6. So you scleral tunnel fake is your, your initial choice. Rose, yeah. what do you want to do? So I, as a corneal, my big issue, I would do a scleral tunnel, but I wouldn't necessarily do M6 because there's corneal issues when you drag a big a nucleus out through a small Not if you put just elastic under the I would just enlarge my scleral tunnel a little bit so that I don't know. How to dense is this nucleus? What do you figure? Looks pretty dense. Is but it, I don't know. Is that all anterior capsule trauma? It's real dark. You said yeah. very, very dense. It's very, very dense. Like so, on the most scale of hardness, it's like right next to diamond. Oof. <laughs> so I would do a skeletal tunnel with thinking I'm going to go through that skeletal tunnel and remove the whole nucleus. Oh, oh hey, I'm following your advice. Hey, I listen. listen. Finally. <laughs> but, Shocking. But, 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 look, look how big I make the prayer to me. Yeah, because you think you're going to convert. I'm doing M6 right off the bat. I'm not even trying. Yeah. No FACO probe needed. There you go. FACO schmaco. <laughs> no FACO here. Cornea is reasonable. Patient's pachymetry 600. Endothelial cell counts 1600. It's okay. Okay. But I'm going to do a little bit of cautery here. I'm going to nice, nice looking scleral, scleral tunnel here for M6. Get a nice look. And to avoid damage in the cornea, I'll show you again my cheat code. I do something that's a little unconventional for M6. I make a para 180 degrees opposite and I push it out. Let me show you that. Oh, okay. Because I'm always afraid if I use that lens loop, it'll be, He's making I don't want to drag it up incision. against the cornea. So here, I'm making the incision here. Kind of wiggle, 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 make sure I'm in the correct plane. So reasonable tunnel length there. I'll get a rexus done. I want a juicy rexus. Now, interestingly, I get a reasonable size rexus even though it's got that uh, weak zone of support there, but it's enough to support that I can actually get the rexes done. So I'm going to grab the capsule here. I'm going to make a five, five and a half, let's say five and a half millimeter rexes. Why so small? Five and a half is good. No? For M6, I make larger rexes. Okay, I mean, I'm just, I'm still learning. We'll get it done. 
So there's the rexus, and by some miracle, it's not fibrotic or anything. And I'm gonna do some hydrodissection here gently. I'm still kind of worried about that one area of zonular loss, but I, I know one thing, I want this nucleus out of the eye. Because I don't want this thing to go south, I don't want to see it on the macula. So here's the big nucleus, it's like, this is a, this is a big one. Oosh, look at that, there's no cortex left in this eye. So there's the nucleus, so I'm gonna put viscoelastic behind it. Yes. And then I'm gonna put uh, viscoelastic in front of it, disperse yeah. it in both cases. Yeah. There you go, protect that cornea. And I'll show you the post up. the cornea looks pretty good. Now here's my cheat code. My cheat code is opposite para. Oh, first enlarge the incision. And I just find, you know what, let me just not struggle. Yeah. Let me just enlarge make it, it bigger That's than I, I think. Mean. So whatever I think is good, let me go back and make it a little bit more. Yeah. There, a little bit more, a little bit more. Because I'm always wrong. So there's the opposite para. And the cheat code is this, I put the lens loop in, Notice the whole nucleus is on top of the iris, which is where I want it. I don't want it on top of the capsule, but under the iris, I want it on, on the iris. And I just push it out and like delivering a baby, it's the boy. Boom, nice. There it is, it's a diamond, look at that. Wow. That was the nucleus. I gave it to the patient as a souvenir. So now how are you gonna stabilize the back now? Do you put a CTR in now? Now do you do capsule looks? Now you use iris looks, because I don't have capsule looks. Now do you just use counter track for a second instrument? It'll be fine, just proceed with IA. I put a capsule tension ring in now. Yeah. CTR now? Yeah. So viscoelastic in the bag, viscodissected, and then yes. CTR. Yeah. How about no, no, you don't want to do hooks? No. Not if the CTR is stable. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. There's not much cortex, yeah. yeah do, do you think I'll be able to just stabilize it with a CTR alone, or am I going to have to do like a sutured in segment or something? See what it looks See. like. Okay. See how it is. Now, in this case, if there is a problem, you can really blame the patient because it was trauma. It was a sucker punch, it was a, his left eye, and it was a right hook. Wow. Ten years ago, though. Patient wanted to make sure it was really not going to go away on its own. <laughs> the Zonials never forget. They you never do. All right, so let me show you what we got here. Uh, we're going to do video up. Right there we go. Perfect. I'm not listening to your advice. I'm just going to proceed with IA. There's, there's cortex, see? As long as you do gentle yeah. IA, you can, and tangential sweeps. And, and I did by manual, like you taught me. Yeah. And look, and what, you know what's neat is that the big M6 incision just doesn't leak at all during IA. I mean, that's a really neat incision. I, finally, I think I finally slightly figured it out. So the incision's pretty good. I do the, the easy areas first, and then come the top areas. Now here, uh, maybe I should visco that second for the CTR and first to get some more support. So mm -hmm. I'll put the, there's this viscoelastic. I'll try visco dissect it. Now I see a little bit too much of the lens bag equator. So here's the CTR, I'm gonna follow your advice. Here we go, CTR going in. I like this trick with the Sinsky. Yeah. And therefore I always like the preloaded hooks to the left. And so deliver, deliver, deliver. And I may have to like do a refresher course on how to size these. I just choose like the small or the medium, whatever's available. I don't think it's that critical. But you, you like to size it. So here's the Triumph Sinlone. I'm free, right? I don't know about that. Let me put a little more triumphs in loan. You never know. There we go. There we go. Yeah. See, it's always where you least expect it. In the, in the main area of Zion Laws, I didn't find any of it. But here, we'll clean it up so by manual vitrector. Any pearls here for not snagging the bag? Yeah, just be careful, I yeah, suppose. Just go slow. Just go slow, yeah. High cut rate, but just with my hands, it's slow. This is shown at 2x speed, so I've kind of sped this thing up here a little bit. And so now let's talk about the lens. Could you just put a single piece in the bag? It looks stable enough. Or do you want a three piece with optic capture? Do you want three piece sulcus, AC lens, or you want to do Yamane? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do here? Panelists, what do you guys want to do? Well, I mean, it's very safe to do a three-piece IOL haptics in the sulcus in the capture because you did a nice, very nice rexus there. I think if it's all stable, stable, there's nothing wrong with putting a single piece in the bag. Of IOL in the bag. Yeah, in this, in, in this one, with that focal zoner loss now addressed by the CTR, yeah. I think you have pretty much yeah. wide open options here. Now, in this one, you're not doing a presbyopic lens, are you? No. Because right, it's hard to keep it centered sometimes. If it doesn't center, don't do it. Yeah, so I, I get. I, 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 I would do a torque eye well. Torque's okay, right? Yeah, but I wouldn't do a, a presbyopic correcting. I think luckily in this case the patient didn't have much cells, so we're just doing a monofocal. And I'm just going to do a sing, I'm going to do a three piece. I'm going to put the habit in the sulcus about 90 degrees away from that area. 
And I don't even have to use an injector. Look, it's like a big incision. <laughs> it's like the old days. Yeah. And there's that 7L rule, again, anti-S. A little more viscoelastic, get this thing in the eye. And I'll rotate about 90 degrees from here. And, and so that's why, like, to your point, if you did a 6 millimeter rexus, then you wouldn't be able to optic capture. And I think that's why if you can get it through a 5.5. Sometimes it's least, hard. Yeah. But sometimes it's hard to get that it lens is. to prolapse. It, you're right. Six, especially if the bag's fibrotic. Rexus. Exactly. That's why I didn't want to leave the tripod on for too long because it makes the bag more fragile, the capsule. So here I got a little bit of an optic capture, about a five and a half for X's. I think he did almost a six. Though. Yeah, it was a six. Okay. I still got an optic capture. 5.9. And I'm still, I'm old fashioned, even though the incision seals well, I'm just going to suture up. What are you using to suture? Tano nylon. And why not use some Vicryl so it just dissolves on its own? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you're asking me, I don't know. I, just, I don't know. I I just, you around. just sounded like my son that did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are my big sisters here. You're here to school me. Big sisters? Yeah. Okay, younger sister. I said, Much younger sister. I, I said, Hello. Big inexperience. Okay. So, but look, I, I put the sutures anyway. Here's a more triumph Sinlone just because I want to make sure. I'll put, I, I put some preservative free moxifloxin in the eye. I'm going to close. Here's your Vicryl. I'll close the conduit Vicryl. You could also close the conduit with a little bit of cautery. Mm, I use the Vicryl. But, uh, you said micro, I'll use micro now. And look, good draping, by the way. And then I'm just going to, I got to just that. make sure, right? I don't need any grief later in life. Beautiful. Post-op day one, nice. look at the cornea, pretty reasonable. A little yeah. bit of decimate folds. A little bit. But not 